Hello and welcome to Photographic Connections, the podcast where we create connection to self, nature and others through the art of photography. My name is Kim Grant, the founder of Photographic Connections and your host for this podcast. And today, well, this is where it all begins. Welcome to Photographic Connections, this new exciting project that I've been working on over the past few months. And I'm now so delighted to be launching it all to you. And before I begin to introduce you to some very interesting guests and some very inspiring stories, I thought I'd kick off this new podcast by telling you my story and why I've set up Photographic Connections. Because we are so much more than just a podcast. We are a whole community full of learning, connection, creativity, inspiration, and it all links back to photography. So without further ado, let's begin photographic connections. So I guess before I begin to tell you actually what everything that photographic connections entails, I thought it would be a really nice idea to tell you my story, my story of where my photography journey began and all the events that led up to me picking up my first camera and then going on to doing a number of things with my life that then resulted in this project, Photographic Connections, being created. I've realised through a number of people I've met over the past few years, as well as things that I've been looking at and studying, that life is an incredible journey. And as we're going through life, we're constantly evolving, learning about the world and ourselves, and connecting with interesting people that can really change our mindset. And it's made me really appreciate our story. Every single one of us has a story of how we were born, how we were raised, the experiences we've had, and how every single one of those experiences, whether good or bad, has shaped us to be the person that we are today. And every single one of us has a story that is very, very valid. And I believe every single person has a story that's worth hearing. And you'll be hearing some very interesting and inspiring stories on this podcast moving forwards from fellow photographers from all around the world. But as I say, today I'm going to begin with my story and why I've set up this this new podcast and this new online community. Because it all stems back to, to my life and the experiences I've had, the things that I've always felt like I've missed and kind of lacked in my life, but that I've been on a journey to find both within myself and through connections with others. And by bringing all those things together to create this new community online, I'm hoping that the things that I feel like I was lacking and that I've learned to find and implement into my life, I can be able to help you find and implement them into your lives too. And my story all begins in the northeast of Scotland. So I was brought up um, in the beautiful Murray area of Scotland, Not the most well-known part of Scotland, but it's certainly one of the most relaxing and calming areas I personally have ever come across. And no matter where I go in my journey, I always have to return to Murray. And as a result, I'm actually in the process of trying to move back there. And because I just can't get enough of the area because it's held so incredibly deeply to my heart. And without Murray and my upbringing there, I would not be doing what I'm doing today. So I was very fortunate growing up to live completely surrounded by nature. Until the age of five, I lived in this lovely little cottage in the countryside, surrounded by fields and nature. We grew our own vegetables in the garden. We had a pond, beautiful grass for me to play on. And I just had this really deep connection to nature. I just Although obviously at that that stage of our lives, we don't really remember much. I just remember the freedom, the freedom of just getting out, running around as a child, having that safety to go out into the fields and play with my friends who at the time were my neighbours. We used to climb on things such as hay bales, play hide and seek, run around, fly kites, very, very connected to nature, very free. And it was a very, very safe place to, to grow up. And for somebody like me, who's quite introverted, that freedom in nature, um, away, I guess, from my parents and connecting with with other children and nature was so inherent in me from a very, very early age. And in fact, my earliest memory was me waking up. I must have been about four years old 
and I, I could, can't for the life of me obviously remember how this happened but I just remember getting up putting on my Wellington boots and my jacket and walking out into the garden and it must have been about six o'clock in the morning because my parents were not awake and I just remember this beautiful light this beautiful sunshine it, I'm sure, certain it was late spring early summer and it was so so sunny and I just remember looking around me and being bathed in this gorgeous light and I could hear the rooster down at the local farm calling as I as I awoke that morning. And I just remember feeling this incredible, deep connection to nature. And I never obviously knew at the time, being so young, that nature would play such an incredible part in my life moving forwards. And at the age of five or six, we ended up moving to a village just 10 minutes down the road, which was in the village, it was a village called, um, called Berghead. And I lived on the actual head Lindenberg head for a few years, which was a very hostile place to live. As a child, it was not particularly safe. We were literally on a cliff's edge overlooking the harbour. But again, that connection to nature was very apparent. The view from my bedroom window was the harbour, was the pier. And in the winter months when it was stormy, the, the winds up there were unbelievable. And I remember as a child just feeling so almost scared by the force of nature there actually it really made me see a darker side of nature but in the process of that helped me to develop a much deeper connection with it and realize that no matter what's going on in the world nature kind of surrounds us and if we live our lives very connected to that I kind of found that emotionally it was a very interesting thing to kind of tap into just feeling that wind, that force of nature, seeing the crashing waves against the harbour wall and being living in that environment, I think, from such a young age, I was just so connected to the sea. I was literally living, like I say, on this cottage right on this headland on a cliff face, which was once home to an ancient Pictish fort. It was a place that's seen a lot of history and a lot going on in the world. And looking back now, I just think it was a very strange time of my life as a child to be living in that environment but again so incredibly grateful because again that connection to nature was so incredibly apparent for me and one of the the fondest memories I have from that house was me going out into the garden again by myself and playing with snails I just remember it was a rainy day and there was all these snails going around the garden and we didn't have much of a garden it was very small and it was complete concrete with just weeds growing out of this wall but these snails were were within these weeds. And I just remember picking them up, connecting to them, just having this deep relationship with nature, which I guess at the time in my life, I didn't feel like I had that relationship with any human being. I just felt like nature was my solace. And then for a number of years, we moved into another place, which was in the same village, not quite as connected to nature. But at the time, we did have some some fields around our house, which uh, sadly have now disappeared and houses have been built on them. But within those fields, there was a number of bushes and things that we would build dens in and just enjoy being out in nature, playing hide and seek, like I say, building dens, running around, just playing games with the local kids. And we had this incredible view over from these fields, again, of the sea. I was surrounded growing up by the sea and fields which in turn just surrounded me with nature. And the only holidays I ever went on as a child in Scotland was caravanning and camping holidays in the Scottish Highlands. So I built up this very deep connection, I feel, with both Scotland and also the natural world. And then when I reached my teenage years, I ended up falling into a really, really dark place. I was very, very depressed and anxious. I was always ill. And there was times in my life where I just didn't, I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand what was wrong with me. And I just remember feeling incredibly dark to the point where I felt so disconnected from the world. I didn't feel like I had any true friends. I didn't feel particularly connected to my family. I, because I was ill, I wasn't able to go out and spend all this time in nature like I used to. I wasn't able to run around and be active like I used to be. I was always tired, always sick, struggling to eat. I just felt horrendous. And I was dealing with so many grief at the time. Grief, which I never realised growing up was grief. Grief of a number of things that I was 
I'd lost in my life that I was lacking um, and this real sense of just disconnect. I wasn't connected to anybody. I wasn't even connected to myself. And I went through a number of years of being completely numb, completely dissociated from everything. And it was just an incredible, incredibly dark time of my life. But I remember one thing I used to do regularly, a number of times a week, was after school I used to go down to the beach and I used to walk through the woodland and, I, and get to the sand dunes and I used to sit on the sand dunes and I used to watch the sunset. And I just remember in those moments they were the only time, like genuinely the only time, that I felt anything. And I remember watching these sunsets and watching the colour the light change around me and it was the only time I could feel and that feeling came from the wind, the wind against my skin, feeling kind of touched and soothed by the this invisible force that surrounds us all and the smell of the sea and the sound of the sea and everything else that was going on at the beach. I just remember there were the only times that I felt connected to anything and the only times where I ever felt remotely grounded and going down to the beach and watching the sunset used to be like a solace to me in many ways it was like the only life type lifeline I had and one day watching this sunset I just realized that every single sunset I was watching was different they were so beautiful in their own way some days there was not much of a sunset at all and other days, there was this incredible beauty of golds, yellows, reds, purples, illuminating the sky. And depending on whether the tide was in or out, also affected what result these sunsets would have. And I was always creative growing up. I, I loved art at school. I was never particularly good at drawing or anything, but I always knew that an art artistic expression was important to me and one day I thought how can I connect more deeply with these beautiful sunsets and that was where I got my first camera and the moment I got that camera it was a tiny little point and shoot camera I just remember photographing these sunsets and just feeling like it was giving me a little bit more connection just that little bit more connection and then I can't remember how I stumbled into it, but I got to the stage where I was like, I can't do much with this little point and shoot camera. I want to be more creative. I want to connect with this more deeply. And that is where I ended up getting my first DSLR. And that was where my photography journey began. That DSLR and that connection to this beautiful beach and these beautiful sunsets was like, the most incredible thing I could ever have found because it gave me an outlet. It gave me a connection to something deeper and bigger than me. It made me feel like I had a little bit of a purpose, but also it made me feel like I had a creative outlet. An outlet, not just for my creativity, but also for my emotions and a way that I could connect to this beautiful nature that surrounded me at a time in my life where like I say I wasn't connected to anything like I genuinely wasn't connected to anything and I cannot even put into words how dark a place I was in at the time like the point genuinely where sometimes I sit and I can't believe that I'm still here when I think back to how dark things were for me back then but when I look back it was this genuinely this connection to the sunset and this connection that photography brought me that I have to genuinely believe saved my life. And buying the camera was just the beginning. From there, I bought a tripod, I bought a number of filters, and just experimenting with compositions, with different shutter speeds, with different settings. I just began to feel a spark and a happiness and a joy inside of me that I hadn't felt for years. And it gave me this deeper connection to Mother Nature that we can all access but in the world we live in now we just many people live so disconnected with nature and I just realized that without nature I wouldn't be here but I also recognized that I had to go through these struggles and these times because without them I wouldn't have developed that deep connection with nature I wouldn't 
potentially have got into photography and I wouldn't be sitting here speaking to you right now. Every single thing I have been through has led up to this moment. Just like every little thing you've been through, just like every single thing that you've been through in your life has led up to this moment for you as well. And I always ask people, you know, what got you into photography? And everybody's answers is always so different. But I realise that if we can go back to that why, why did we get into photography? We can really understand ourselves on a very, very deep level. And for those of us who then go on to do photography in some form professionally, if we can go back to that why, our professional lives make so much more sense. And for me, being as honest as possible here, I never, ever in a million years thought that I would do photography or any form of creativity professionally, nor did I ever think, ever think I would have my own business. It was never something that interested me growing up. In fact, because of all these struggles I went through as a teenager, when I left school, I went to university and I studied to be a nurse. And my nursing training was again life-changing. At the time, I was going through so many health problems, which were exacerbated massively by nursing. The stress of the job, the 12-hour shifts, going from day shifts to night shifts, being constantly kind of assessed and constantly having people's lives in your hands. It was My nurse training was just an incredibly eye-opening time of my life, but also it was also just detrimental further for my health. But again, it's an experience I was so incredibly grateful to have because for the first time in my life, I felt like I had a connection to other people and I felt like I was able to give back to other people. The thing I enjoyed the most about my nursing time, both the three years I was a student and the three years I was a qualified staff nurse, was that connection to others, was making a difference. I realised that my strengths lay in taking that time for patients and speaking to them, getting to know them. I loved listening to their stories, especially the elderly patients. I loved sitting with them and listening to their stories because some of them had the most fascinating stories and life lessons and everything that had led them up to being to where they were in that moment. But I also found nursing to be a very almost upsetting career path to be in because I realised that so many people that were coming in and out of hospital with a lot of these chronic illnesses and conditions a lot of them were very lonely or very disconnected or had the thing I realised as time progressed was something like 70 or 80 percent of my patients were on antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication. I didn't realise that in the beginning of my journey, but as I was getting towards the end of my nursing career, I just kind of thought, what is going on here? The vast majority of people in this ward have diagnosed depression or diagnosed anxiety. A lot of them were very, just found life very difficult. I found it really shocking because I was looking after these patients who had depression and anxiety, which is what I was struggling with on and off at the time as well. And I was just feeling this deep empathy for them because we were all kind of in this same boat, but yet we were in this system that didn't seem to be helping us. And the profession of nursing as time progressed was getting more and more and more stressful, more and more short-staffed, less and less time to have that one-to-one time with my patients that I loved so much. I find I was spending more and more time doing paperwork and things that doctors used to do than what nursing used to be like. And while I loved learning these practical techniques and things, I did kind of realise that something wasn't right. For me, something wasn't right. Nursing is meant to be about care. It's meant to be about empathy, about compassion, about helping people out of a dark time and helping them to recover. And I mostly worked in surgery, which you did see that recovery. People came in ill or with broken bones or needing hip replacements and they would get these things and then they would be sent home to recover further in the community. But especially when dealing with medical patients, a lot of them were were recurrent admissions. And there was really sad cases very, very frequently of people with really severe mental health problems And a lot of it came down to this lack of connection 
this lack of time, empathy, this lack of purpose, and this disconnect to their emotions, to others, to life, to the community, to nature. And I just found that the Western medicine sort of way that it's become, I just found in so many cases it wasn't helping these patients and me working in that that environment wasn't helping me. And I remember I worked on the top floor of my local hospital and we had this beautiful view over the, the hills in the distance. And I remember every morning I would go into work and as the sun was rising, as I was doing my drug round, I used to think I wish I was out there. I wish I was out there in nature, watching this sunrise actually out there with my camera. That's all I wanted in that moment. But instead I was stuck in this hospital with no fresh air, surrounded by a lot of negativity, a lot of stress, and a system that really wasn't giving people the empathy, the emotional support, the love, the understanding that they really needed. And that wasn't just with regards to patients, that was also with regards to staff. And I just realised I didn't want to work in that environment, I wanted to work outdoors, I wanted to be out there. And throughout all of this time, I would go out every day I had off work, I would be out with my camera and sometimes I would finish a shift and if the northern lights were out, I'd run down with my camera and just photograph the northern lights at my local beach just as a way of, you know, I guess recharging myself after that very stressful day in the hospital wards. And I just, like I said, I just thought I can't work in this environment because something didn't feel right to me. And looking at my own journey, it didn't matter how many tests I got, it didn't matter how many professionals I saw within the system, I just wasn't getting any better. I wasn't getting any answers to why I was ill, why I was always tired, why I was always sick, why I was struggling to digest food, why I was always, or why I was in and out of depression and anxiety. Because I realised that that system wasn't going to help me. What was going to help me was finding my own path, my own route, finding a connection to nature finding professionals from alternative streams and places to help me and also to begin my own journey, to be creative, to learn about myself, to do therapy, to heal the traumas that had come from my childhood and which we all have. You know, it doesn't matter how, I've realised this, it doesn't matter how grateful or how beautiful you feel your childhood was, every single person, no matter what home they come from, I find has at least... You know, has a number of events that happened in their childhood which you may not see as being traumatic but everything that happens to us growing up leaves a lasting effect on us in these vulnerable years when we're growing and evolving and these things always come back to us later in life and I was living in this world when I was in this western medicine society being working in this world that wasn't helping me heal and then I was trying to heal other people with very limited resources and the only option was surgery or medication. I I just felt like I didn't belong there, you know. I can't quite articulate it right now, I'm still kind of working on all of this, but I realised like I had to go through my nurse training because it brought me out of my shell. It brought me some incredible friendships, incredible relationships and it taught me a lot, a lot about life, a lot about the world we live in and a lot about who I was. And it made me realise who I didn't want to be and made me realise who I did want to be. And things kind of really came to a head for me. I ended up coming, one of the just to, before I left the profession, I remember one night turning up to night shift and I had a panic attack in the car. I couldn't breathe. My heart was pounding so heavy. I honestly thought I was going to die. Genuinely thought I was going to die. And... I remember phoning the ward and one of my colleagues came out and they they took me into A&E and I got checked over and I remember I got no empathy, no support, nothing from the doctor in A&E. I remember they did all of my observations and they said, yes, your pulse is really high, your blood pressure is a bit low, you're tired, you're stressed, but it's fine, just go to work. And I was like, what? I've literally just had a panic attack. I'm clearly not coping. 
but yet you're expecting me to go up to the ward and do a 12-hour shift with people's lives in my hands. That for me was like the moment where I thought I can't, I can't work in this environment anymore. And over the next sort of six months, I was able to get out of the profession. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, photography was always in the background. But what I did was I ended up doing a conservation voluntary internship. So it was a year where I could live in voluntary accommodation for free. All I had to pay for was my food. And I was able to be in nature every day doing practical stuff from building paths to fences to doing surveys. So surveying birds and plants and different species and being a part of a team that was working outdoors, that was just so connected with nature and just learning more about the natural world. And leading up to this point, I'd done a few like short term voluntary kind of weekends and, and weeks on my, my holidays from nursing. But this was me really going in there and setting the intention to myself that I want to be in nature. I want to learn more about nature because it's where I feel good. It's where I feel grounded and it's where I want to work. And I thought, okay, I'll go into this internship and at the end of it, I'll be able to get a job working outdoors in nature and that'll be my life, working in conservation, working in nature. But as time progressed, I kind of realised that there was something about it that didn't quite sit with me either. It was like, I just found the kind of politics of surrounding a lot of work in conservation about different land management different ways of managing and conserving land and just there was a lot about it that just didn't really resonate with me and again throughout all of this I was doing photography I'd started my YouTube channel so I was going out every week kind of filming videos about photography and about learning about nature and posting on the, on the internet Again, never in the back of my mind did I ever think that photography, YouTube, content creation was ever going to be a career for me. But when I finished this voluntary internship, I couldn't go back to nursing because my registration had lapsed. I hadn't worked for about six months and I hadn't renewed my registration because I just knew, I just knew it wasn't what I wanted to do. And I, I couldn't find a job in conservation. There was none at the time that came up that I was interested in. And I just thought, what can I do? Like I had this YouTube channel that had been going for I think about two or three years by then. So I just thought I'm going to start running workshops. I'm going to start doing more things with my photography. I'm going to start doing more YouTube stuff. Um, I began to get involved with tourism boards, promoting different parts of Scotland, which meant I was able to travel around the country and do some really cool things, which was great because I learned a lot about the country and had some fantastic experiences and met some really interesting people. But the kind of commercial side of the tourism industry just didn't really sit with me again, encouraging people to come out into nature, not always respecting the landscape. And also just the whole commercial world just never really fitted with me either. So again, I was kind of doing this business and having these areas of my business that just didn't sit very well with me. And throughout that whole time, in fact, my whole life, my biggest interests have been creativity, philosophy, psychology, and spirituality and there's been times in my life when I've gone in and out of all these things but they've always been there when I was at school my favorite subject was religious moral and philosophical studies because I loved learning about different belief systems different ways of living I loved learning about the meaning of life you know why are we here what is the purpose of all of this and I did a psychology in my final year of school and I absolutely loved it. And my my backup choice if nursing never played out or never got into nursing was going to be to, to train in psychology. But in many ways, I'm really glad that didn't happen now. Because again, I, I again, like everything else, I think I personally have found the psychology world to be very restrictive. Because I realise holistically every single person on this planet we all have our own issues, our own troubles, and what worked for us doesn't always work for everybody else. And following one specific route and being very involved with that one specific route and not being open to other things, I always just felt very contained. But I always knew that psychology was something that's always fascinated me. How my mind works, how other people's mind works, how I've been conditioned based on my experiences. And then I've kind of linked a lot of psychology to my photography work. And I'm still kind of in this phase of just like, what is going on? Like, I know photography is calling me, things are going to plan. 
I've got a YouTube channel that was doing really well, but there was just, there was aspects of my business and my philosophy that just, they weren't sitting with me. And I was thinking back to where I'd come from, a lot of the illnesses I'd had growing up, the mental health struggles I'd had, my deep connection with nature, my nursing career. I used to view the last few years, my nursing career as very separate to my photography business. But I've come to realize now that nothing is separate. And when you look at a lot of people's lives, especially people who get into business, often the businesses or the the careers they've had leading up to them starting their business, they are related. And for me now, I realize that my nursing career and everything I've been through is related. And there is so much in it. And now, when I was sitting down last year doing a lot of work on myself, I'm like, what can I do with my photography work, with my creations that can help other people? Because that's why I wanted to become a nurse in the first place. It was because I wanted to help people. And I felt like in the Western medicine world, I wasn't able to help people, definitely not in the way that I wanted to. I realise that the most struggles I've had in my life have been emotional and what photography has given me is an incredible emotional outlet and it's really helped me to channel my emotions, to understand my emotions and to express myself and the biggest thing photography has given me is connection, connection to myself, connection to nature and also connection to others. I've met so many incredible people since I've started doing photography, it's been unbelievable And I kind of believe that if we start following the right path in life, that things always seem to fall into place. And when we reflect on our lives, we realize where we're meant to be going. And for me, kind of towards the end of last year into this year, it just, something hit the nail on the head for me. And I just thought, I don't want to just keep be making YouTube videos for the sake of it. I've never been a really technical photographer that enjoys teaching photography. I do do it and it's part of my my business and the kind of the and I need to know a lot about the technicalities of photography to do what I do, you know, run workshops, run mentoring, all that kind of stuff. But I realized that there has to be more meaning to this. I want to have be of service to people. Like I genuinely want to help people to to help them in a way that makes and that I feel makes a difference and that's really aligned with me. And obviously what I think listening to my story, what is the most aligned thing to me is nature and creativity, self-expression, emotions and connection. And I've realised as I've began to kind of heal a lot of my my personal issues, both physical, mental, emotional and spiritually, the things that are healing me is nature alternative therapies that are out with the western world nutrition eating nutritious healthy foods linked to nature it's been different therapies it's been finding connection you know if I go through a period of my life where I don't have a really close connection a close friendship a close partner whatever it may be like I really start to struggle But then I open up to that connection of connection to myself, connection to the universe, whatever we want to believe in. And it helps me. So I have to either have connection with others, deep connection with myself and bring these together to feel completely balanced. And when I don't have people in my life that get me, that understand me, that I can relate to, I really struggle. And I kind of, I'm listening to all of these things, all of these lessons I guess that I've learned in my own journey and looking at back to my nursing career and what a lot of my patients I feel were missing in their lives which were then manifesting into their depression their anxiety moving on to physical ailments and physical issues they were missing a lot of the things that I was missing and sometimes I still miss you know I'm human I go through periods of having very close relationships and periods of not really having anybody to turn to Then I go through periods of intense creativity where I feel very connected, very motivated and periods of withdrawal where I need to work through something, where I need to to take a step back, to rest, rejuvenate. But all of this, all of this that I've kind of learned over the last, you know, throughout my life, everything I've learned, I've been like, I want to create something that can help other people. And this is where photographic connections comes into place. Photographic Connections is going to be an online community 
that who knows, maybe potentially one day will become physical. I have no expectations for this at all. All I know is that I'm going to show up every single week and upload a podcast episode. The vast majority of those episodes are going to be conversations with other photographers so we can learn from other people. We can create a community of incredible creative photographers with incredible stories, incredible ideas. Think we're going to share what motivates them. We're going to share their struggles. We're going to share why photography, why nature, why community in photography and all these things is so important so that this podcast can inspire you so that you can rely on the fact that every week you can come on to whatever streaming platform you use and there's going to be a new podcast with a new story, with some new inspiration, with some new ideas. And from time to time, I may just come on here and speak myself, but like so the vast majority of the time, it's going to be other people. So we can create a community, a community of stories, a community of knowledge, a community of ideas that will inspire you no matter where you live in the world to get out there and express yourself through photography. But as I mentioned at the beginning, Photographic Connections is not just a podcast. It's going to be a complete online community. I have a website that I've set up called photographicconnections.com. On that website every month, we're going to be issuing photographic challenges. Now, there's a number of people out there that do photographic challenges, and there's a number of communities out there that you can join linked to photography. So Photographic Connections may not be for you, and if it's not, I hope you can find a community that is for you. But for those of you who resonate with my story, this I really hope that Photographic Connections will be a community that you will be interested in joining. Because there's two, like I said, two aspects to all of this, right? So we've got the free podcast every week. We also have free monthly challenges. Now, these challenges are going to be designed to help you express yourself, to help you have freedom, autonomy, to be able to go out there and create a connection to your own creativity, your own photography, and give you the motivation to go out every month and do photography, to connect with that side of you, to connect with your expression and your creativity. And these challenges are completely free for anybody to take part in. Like, so they'll be put on my website and my social media channels every month, at the beginning of every month. And you can go out and you can take part in these challenges if, if you'd like to. And then there's going to be the community element of Photographic Connections, which is a paid for community, but it is only £10 a month, which I really feel is an incredible, generous offering. Because as part of this community, every month I'm going to be hosting a live webinar and that webinar is going to be in some way linked to the monthly challenge, but it's going to be delving really deeply into the theme. So for example, the first challenge, which you can see on the website right now, which is going to be April's challenge, is to go out there into the world and photograph your favourite colour. No matter what it may be, just go out there, find your favourite colour, photograph it in the way you want to, and really connect with that colour. But in order for you to understand a little bit more about colour, to understand the impact colour can have and maybe to understand why that's your favourite colour. I'm going to be hosting a live webinar for my community members online, which they can attend, which we're going to be looking into. It's going to be called an introduction to colour and we're going to look at colour and how colour can affect our moods, our emotions, why we're drawn to certain more colours than others, the impact colour can have on our lives almost looking, I guess, into a little bit of things like colour therapy, because colour is such an important aspect to photography, apart from if you just do black and white photography, of course. But colour is such an incredibly powerful part of photography, an incredible part of our lives. And these webinars I'm going to be doing every month, they're not going to be necessarily what uh, about teaching photography for instance because there's so many people out there that you can go to if you want to learn what settings to use what exposures to use what composition to use but they're going to be to get you to think more deeply about your photography and the world around you in order for you to connect with yourself and these challenges on a much deeper level so it's going to be a very deep kind of teaching and, and learning element to these webinars about topics that I feel will really help you to bring more meaning both into your life but also into your photography. And I'm also going to have a monthly community members Zoom catch up, which is going to be where anybody who's part of the community can come on to Zoom at this this slot we'll have once a month. And we can sit on Zoom and we can talk. You know, every month we can meet up if you'd like to attend the meeting. And we can share. So we can either share our images that we've taken throughout the challenge. 
We can share maybe what's come up from that us that month, the experiences we've had with our cameras, how they've made us feel. And if anybody has any questions or any advice that they need or any support that they need, it's going to be a nice little community of us just chatting on Zoom, really friendly and sharing ideas, sharing visions, sharing goals, sharing images. And you can, you know, sit there and listen if you want or you can participate But I hope in time that people continue to show up to these monthly catch-ups that we can begin to to get to know each other on a much more personal level and create community and connection throughout the internet. And also within the community, we're going to, you could have access to our community members Facebook group, which allows us again to share the images that we've taken that month. And for those who do share images on there, you get the chance to potentially feature in our monthly blog which is linked to the photography challenge that we're undertaking. Now, I know that not everybody's on Facebook and I personally have a very kind of love-hate relationship with the platform. So if anybody knows of any other group hosting platforms um, that, that I can use in conjunction with Facebook or even alternatively to Facebook, if you become part of the community, please let me know because I want to have somewhere that we can all meet and that we can all connect and we can all share our images and our visions and our stories. So that is Photographic Connections and the tagline as you heard at the beginning of this video is creating connection to self, nature and others through the art of photography. So using photography to connect with yourself, to connect with your emotions, to connect with your interests, to connect with your passions, to help you understand yourself and the world around you on a much more deeper level. Connecting to nature through photography, of course listening to my story nature has been pivotal in my life and in my progression and nature is something that I firmly believe that we all need to have a connection to because we are nature we are nature and if you can use photography as a tool to connect with nature it can really just help you through whether no matter if you're going through a good time or a bad time having that connection to nature it helps us to ground ourselves helps us to to feel connected to something bigger than us It can be very mothering nature. You know, there's a reason why many people call nature mother nature. You know, it's kind of where everything's been created, where so much beauty is, where every single sense that we can think of, we can connect to when we're in nature. Unlike when we're in our house, we may be seeing things, we may hear things, we've got music on or the television on or whatever, but you can't always feel things in your house. But see, when you're in nature, You're seeing the beauty, you're feeling the wind, you're hearing the birds, you're hearing the the sea, you're hearing the water, you're smelling all of these incredible natural smells, which much of which has been made into things like essential oils over the years because they can calm us, they can help us unwind. And you're also tasting a lot in nature. You wouldn't believe it, but a lot of us are going around, you're tasting things. And the amount of scientific studies that people have done in recent years about nature and the healing benefits of nature, it is incredible. And that's going to be a very, very fundamental aspect of photographic connections is this connection to nature, because it really can heal us in many ways. It can give us more connection and it can help us massively with our photography and expression and give us something to head out there and photograph that's unpredictable, that's forever changing and that is so incredibly beautiful. And the last element, creating connection to, to others. Of course, you're through this podcast, you're going to be hearing other people's stories. This is going to be an incredible energetic community of people from all over the world listening to this podcast, listening to the stories and connecting with each, each other, connecting to the stories, hopefully resonating with them, hopefully getting inspiration from them. We're going to be connecting together through watching the webinars every month for my community members. For those who aren't community members and you're just taking part in the monthly challenges, again, you're connecting in many ways because you're all out there doing these challenges together. And even if you're not physically doing them together, we're all out there doing them together with the same ideas, the same cause, the same brief, but we're doing them in our own unique way. And of course, these monthly catch-ups on Zoom is a chance for us to physically see each other over the beautiful technology that is the internet. And who knows what the future holds? If enough people join this community, enough people connect online, maybe in time there will be physical meetups around the world of people coming together who live in the same area, who can in time form physical, meaningful friendships with people who have the same passion, the same interest and the same drive. 
because one of the biggest feedbacks I have had from my mentorship clients over the last few years is so many of them would love to have people to go out and do photography with. There's a lot of people who use photography as like a a time of solitude and solace but there's also a lot of people that would love to have a friend or a companion to do photography with and if I can help in any way to bring people together for those who want that person in their life that they can go out and do photography with I really want to aid you in finding that. I really really do it's so incredibly important to me and I really hope that photographic connections will give us the vessel that we need to help you guys find that connection, that friendship, that understanding that you're you're looking for. And I also recognize again from feedback that you know we are ch- the world is changing all the time. And I realize that there's a lot of photography groups, camera clubs and all that out there that do incredible work that bring people together, that people love going to and love connecting to and who people have made friends through. But I also recognise that a lot of camera clubs are very gear orientated or very competition orientated, which there's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of people who enjoy learning about gear and technology. There's a lot of people who love competitions and they love getting points and they love leaderboards, but not everybody does. And I want to create a community for people who maybe don't resonate with that and who want a more inclusive place, which is more about connection, more about self-expression and where they're not afraid to share their creations. Because photography, I believe, is an art form. And I, I've always struggled with this concept of rules in photography and this concept of people judging our work. I feel like we should be allowed the chance to express ourselves in whatever way we want to because in so many other creative art forms, whether it's painting, whether it's writing, whether it's poetry, whether it's music, of course there is some art, artistic pieces, some music pieces, some writings that that have more potential meaning for others than than other ones do. But for that artist that's created that writing, that's created that piece, that's created that music, it's given them a channel, it's given them an outlet, and it is beautiful to them. And when they share it with other people, it's not always that they're looking for feedback or looking for for constructive criticism they're just wanting to share their feelings if you look into paintings so often especially expressive painting it's all about channeling emotions when you look into music so many songs out there are about heartbreak heartache falling in love having your heart broken um about death about rebirth or about celebration music comes from a place of emotion and i believe that photography has that place as well we've lived in a world where photography has been very technical very gear orientated very masculine for a long long time and now there's more and more people getting involved in the creative element of photography and that is what photographic connections is about it's about helping you understand yourself better finding a creative outlet using photography in a way it's really constructive and beautiful for you creating this community so you can connect to other people, you can share your ideas with other people where you know you're not going to be judged or criticised for your photographic images and creations and where you can feel inspired to get out there into nature and create whatever it is you want to create and photograph whatever it is that you're drawn to photograph. Photographic Connections is here to inspire you, to help you learn, to help you connect and to help you create. And this is the most Oh, I can't tell you, I honestly cannot tell you how much it means to me to have now created a project that really resonates with me and that is bringing together everything that you've heard in my story today and trying to create something that is going to bring benefit to other people's lives. So if you resonate with anything I've said in today's podcast and if you're looking forward to the upcoming interviews that I have, please stay tuned because it's going to be a podcast every single week. If you want to see the monthly challenges, you can follow me on social media under Photographic Connections. There's an Instagram page and a Facebook page. And if you want to join the beautiful Photographic Connections community, head over to photographicconnections.com where you can sign up for just £10 a month and gain access to our monthly webinar, our monthly catch-ups, our members community page and get the chance to potentially feature in our monthly blog when you take part in our challenges. And who knows in the future there may be other things added to this. 
But all I can do right now is I can promise you that every week I'm going to show up for this podcast and every month I'm going to do research, I'm going to do these webinars because they're going to be about topics that I really feel will help you guys and topics that I want to learn more about as well. So things that I'm really passionate about and that I want to share with you guys. I just want us to feel connected and I want us to feel free and I want us to feel like we can create what we want to create And I want us all to be able to heal a part of us that is crying out to be healed because we all have something within us that we're struggling with right now. Whether it's loneliness, whether it's heartache, whether it's illness, whether it's pain, whether it's feeling misunderstood, whether it's something like self-worth, insecurities, every single human being on the planet has something inside of them, no matter how happy and chirpy they may feel. Every single one of us has something that is niggling in the background that we need a a form of creation and connection to channel and to feel held, to feel heard and to feel understood. Like if you resonate with any of this, it would be an an absolute honour to me to have you part of this community. And even if you just listen to this podcast, I cannot tell you how much it means to me to have you here listening to this because this everything I'm creating under Photographic Connections is coming from a place of love and it's coming from the heart and I'm so passionate about this and I am just so excited to see where it where it leads so yeah thank you so much for listening today it means the world to me for you to sit down and listen to my story there's so much more that I'll be sharing in future episodes but next time as I say we're going to be beginning the conversations with other photographers to inspire you to get out there with your camera So now that we've reached the end of this podcast, there's only one thing left for you to do. Pick up your camera and head outdoors. There's so many incredible photographic opportunities just waiting for you to discover.